this video goes through and discusses the high level, the overall picture of what we mean by a binomial probability distribution. Now the first thing that I want to point out to you is this prefix by right here, that prefix by, which simply means, and that's no surprise to you, simply means the number two, right? A bicycle or bifocals or anything with a by. So what we mean when you think, when you hear that phrase binomial probability distribution, I want you to think of two possible outcomes, right? Two possible outcomes. Something called a success and the other outcome is a failure. The other thing with binomial probability distributions that come to mind is, so let me put here, two possible outcomes. Okay, we'll call them success, I'll refer a little bit more to this in a second, and failure. Um, the other thing I want you to think of is that um, binomial probability di distributions have a fixed number of trials, right? It has a fixed number of trials. For example, and let's use an analogy of say basketball, I like basketball. So when I stand at the free throw line, let's say I was I was I was gonna make a shot, I, I was gonna shoot the basket, but I got fouled. You know that in basketball you get if the if the foul is called by the referee, you get two free shots at the free throw line, right? So that would be, the number two would be the fixed number of outcomes, or the fixed number, rather, of trials. Um, if I was standing behind the three-point line and trying to shoot and got fouled, I would have a fixed number of trials of three. I'd be able to take three shots from the free throw line, okay? Anyway, so um, the, the there is going to be a set number of trials, and I'm going to talk about that in just a second, but the the set number of trials is represented by the lowercase n. Number, oops, number of trials. Okay, um, the other thing too that, that uh, we're of interest is x. Now what's x going to represent? x is going to represent the number of times, right, so given n trials, the number of times that I succeed, that I actually have some success, okay? So x can be any number. x is going to represent the number of successes. And that's going to be any number between 0 and n, I hope you understand, okay? So if I'm standing at the free throw line and I get three shots, I get to three, shoot three times, and I want to, let's say, I want to make at least two out of those three or something like that, or I'm looking for the probability that I make exactly just one, or, you know, X is going to be how many shots I get to make, all right? How many shots actually go in the hoop, okay? So X can be zero, maybe I don't make any shots, or it could be one, or it could be two, or it could be three. I cannot, I cannot make four successes, right? I cannot make four shots if I'm only taking three at most, right? So n is going to be the number of trials and x is going to represent the number of times I succeed for each of these trials. All right, the other thing is that when I stand at the free throw line and I make a basket, there is something called a little p and a little q. Now, some books don't use q. Some authors just use a P and I'm going to talk about P and Q in just a second. But little p is going to stand for the probability of success. One of my favorite basketball players is Ray Allen for the Boston Celtics and he is a great free throw shooter. He shoots hundreds of free throws almost every single day and so he's really really good. Every time he stands at the line he stands probably even greater than this but let's just make it a nice even number. He stands a 90% chance of making a shot from the free throw line. So that's his probability of success. Well, what is Q? Q is the complement of P. Right? Q and P are complements of each other. So if you know the probability of success is 0.9, then the complement of it, these guys are complements of each other, the complement of it then is 1 minus that, oh, let me scroll it down so you can see my word complement, the complement is 1 minus P, 
right, 1 minus little p, or in this case, 1 minus 0.9 is 0.10. So he stands a 10% chance of missing and a 90% chance of making it, okay? So pulling all of these things together, there is a formula that can tell you what the probability is of making x number of successes out of n independent trials. Now this formula is a little bit daunting. Don't be, uh, don't be too alarmed or freak out when you see this formula. It's really not that bad, especially if you've got some rudimentary uh, statistics or probability under your belt. But the formula goes like this, right? The probability of making x successes is equal to n factorial over n minus x factorial times x factorial. That's a combination formula right there, okay, if you recognize that, times the probability of success raised to the x power times the probability of failure raised to the n minus x power. All of all three of these things, this one, this one, and this one, get multiplied together, and that will give you the probability of x successes out of n trials. Now that formula is amazingly nasty, all right? It's actually not that bad, especially if you have a calculator. The good thing is, is that some books supply a table for you that can help you find out, right, and it does all this number crunching for you. Now there are so many variables in there that a table can't be big enough to house every single one of them, but take a look at this table. I'm using the Triola book. This is the 11th edition. And in the back of the book, table A1, is a binomial probability table. And I know it's hard to see, but that number right there is 13, right? That's an N number. Anything in this first column is an N number. That's a number 14. And all of this second column here represents an X. So where I'm pointing, that's an X number. And it goes from 0 all the way up to 13. Okay, see how that works? And again, like I said, that the number of successes has to be between 0 and N. Right? I can't make... Um, I can't make 14 free throws if I'm only taking 13 free throws. That just doesn't make sense. So that's why this table in the X column goes between 0 and whatever your N value is. My N value is 13. That's what's showing up here is 13 at the very bottom. Okay, now what are all these numbers over here? These numbers correspond to little p, which is the probability of success. Right? Remember that? Little p is the probability of success. So let me work out an example here. Let's try something, oh, say, like this. Let's say that I am looking for, all right, let's say that I'm looking for the probability that x is equal to 8, all right, the probability that x is equal to 8, given, all right, and you can't see that, there we go, x is equal to 8, given that n is equal to 13, so I'm going to repeat this trial 13 times, and that the probability of success is 0.5. As soon as you see that 0.5, by the way, you automatically know that q is also 0.5, right? Because these two things are complements of each other. Okay, so if I'm looking for the probability that x is equal to 8, I could plug it into that formula that I just showed you, or I could go and refer to this table right here. Right? I can refer to this table. I know you can't read those numbers because they're awfully blurry, and I'm sorry I can't focus in on that. But I'm just going to point something out to you. You probably have a table similar to this in your book. All right? What I'm going to do is this n is 13. Right? This n is 13. That's the number of trials that I have. I'm looking for probability that x is equal to 8. There's my x is equal to 8 and the probability of success was 0.5. So I'm just scooting over here and I'm looking and I can see that this is 0.157. That, that number that I'm pointing to with my finger is 0.157. So using this information that I was given, I know that the probability of this thing is equal to 0.157.